Hello and welcome back to Hyperdaven. Today we have Stephen Colbert's Escape from the Man-Size Cabinet. And you may be saying, it's only a cabinet. How can I possibly not escape? Well, realize this. First of all, it's dark. And it's scary. There's probably cobwebs in there too. And how about the fact that there's no knob on the inside? How are you going to escape from that? That's right. You aren't. So let's see how we fare in the man-sized cabinet. Ooh, I am Stephen Corbett. Congratulations. You're wandering the office because your show doesn't start for two months and they won't let you drive go-karts inside anymore. I'm Stephen Corbett. Nobody tells me where I can and can't drive a go-kart. Hey, that man-sized cabinet looks interesting. Maybe you should explore the man-sized cabinet. Maybe I should. It looks so enticing. Look at that door. Oh, that's probably oak. Oh, we should definitely go in. You enter the cabinet, and it's the size of one man, or in the metric system, one bloke. But with some minor effort, you fit perfectly inside. Well done! Now that you're inside, you can try to leave, or stand here for eight hours. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stand in here for eight hours. Wow, this is great. It's been eight hours, but it barely feels like four hours. Time flies when you're having fun, but all good things must come to an end. You should probably try to leave. You know what? That's what the cabinet wants me to do. It wants me to leave, so no thanks, I'm good right here. Wow, it's great, it's been 16 hours, but it barely feels like eight. Time's still flying. I'm gonna stay in here for another eight hours. Let's go the whole run. Dehydration, hunger, and cabinet fever claim even the greatest of men. Man-sized cabinets are fun, but you chase that high too hard. Let this be a lesson to your dead body. So I died. Well played, cabinet. Well played. In another dimension where I did not choose that. I'm going to try to leave. Oh, hey, it's locked. You can yell for help, try to break the door down, or just sit here, thank you very much. Well, you know what? I've tried sitting, and sitting does nothing, so I'm going to scream. Hello, I'm Stephen Colbert, and I'm trapped in this closet. If you can hear my screams for help, then please assist me. I'll gladly repay you. How about that three-ring binder you've been asking for? Perhaps a mechanical pencil that you oh so dearly need. Unfortunately for you, it's National Ignore Your Boss's Cries for Help Day. Another corporate holiday intended to sell greeting cards and earplugs. Thanks a lot, Hallmark. You can try to break down the door now, or just grin it out. It is a nice cabinet, but we need to break this thing down. Shut up, door, you idiot. You yell as you bang your fist against the metal cabinetry. I hate you. You kick the door repeatedly, and even bite it once. It's delicious. Mmm. Oak. You aren't the boss of me. You do a double drop kick onto the unyielding floor and fall backwards. Wait. This cabinet's supposed to be man-sized. I ordered a man-sized cabinet, not a two-man-sized cabinet. Someone's going to get fired. How is there so much room back here? I can either keep crying and attacking the door, or go further back into the cabinet. Well, let's keep crying and attacking the door. You punch the door yelling, Do you know who I am? It stays locked. I'm gonna punch it again. You headbutt the door. So violently you black out for a second. Or do you? It's very dark in here. Anyways, the door doesn't budge. Now headbutt it again. You throw all of your weight against the cabinet door, succeeding only in toppling it over. The cabinet door is now flush against the floor, held in place by the weight of your body. There is no choice anymore. Explore the cabinet. I don't remember the cabinet being this deep. Or verdant. Someone in the office has been mismanaging funds significantly. Sunlight peeks through a leafy canopy. You are now in a forest. Underneath the tree is a sleeping centaur. Well, I don't recall hiring a centaur. You think I would remember such a thing? Or perhaps it was last Tuesday. Yes, okay. Well, I might have hired a centaur. Regardless, he's sleeping on the job. Let's awaken him. The centaur awakens with a start. Hey, no matter what I said in my sleep, I definitely wasn't dreaming about a lady with a horse top and a person bottom. Whoa, are you Stephen Colbert? Yes. Yes, I am. That's awesome. Hey, how's the new show going to work without the character? Anyways, my name's Randall the Centaur, and I'm supposed to guard the entrance to this world. How did you get here? I'm Stephen Colbert. I asked the questions here. Like, why were you sleeping on the job when I hired you to guard my forest? 
that I did not know that I had. And also I got, I got locked in a cabinet. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Locked in a cabinet. It, it's not my most impressive feat, but trust me, it's not my worst. Okay, well, you shouldn't tell people that. You only get one chance at a first impression. Look, your visit to this land was ill-timed. Murloc, the evil wizard, has cast a pall over this land. He wants to stifle the sound of laughter from the universe and spread suffering for some reason. No one gets it. He lives in a castle of skulls on the other end of the game map. You must go, brave late night host, and defeat him. Only then can you return to your world. Take this to aid you in your quest. He gives you a candle. It never goes out. It's basically magic. I, Stephen Colbert, do like candles, especially magic ones. I don't see how we appropriated the funds in the office to get it, but I appreciate it. Randall sniffs the air. You have to go now. Some important centaur business has come up. Later, Randall. Have a good summer. Don't sleep on the job anymore. Now you're in an Ice Kingdom type environment. That was very quick. A snowstorm has begun swirling around you, but there's a man-sized cave ahead and an ominous castle in the distance. Well, clearly, when given the choice, I always go to the castle. Ominous or not. Are you kidding? The storm is way too bad right now. You've made a very reckless decision for such a famous and handsome person. You should go back and find somewhere else to wait. All right, so this time we shall go to the man-sized cave because I chose to. Not because the game told me to. Wow, this is cozy and somehow familiar. Something glints in the darkness, like a helpful key or valuable gemstone. I, Stephen Colbert, enjoy gemstones. Do you pick up the item? Yes, I do. Hey, it's a key. That's pretty straightforward. Suddenly feels like this cave is pretty cashed out. Shall we exit the cave? Or stand here for another eight hours? I think we should stand here. Leaving is what the cave wants us to do. Boy, this never gets old. But you're running low on supplies. I don't care. Stand here another eight hours. You die. Obviously. You win this time, cave. You win this time. Suddenly, in a different universe, I make a different choice. This time, I exit the cave. The snowstorm has died down a little. Thank goodness they have global warming here, too. You could probably approach the ominous castle now. Which I shall do. This is great. You set goals for yourself, and you pursued them. You attained them. You're Stephen Colbert. Nothing can stand in your way. Suddenly, something stands in your way. A lumbering beast leaps from its hiding place in a snowbank. It's 12 feet tall with a bear trap for a head. You wonder, how did it even hide in the first place? It's 12 feet tall with a bear trap for a head. And how is that biologically accurate? It, how could it possibly eat? It's a bear trap. It would just fall out of the back. Does the bear trap grow with him? When he was younger, did he have a small bear trap? Ah, these questions are too much. Let's just face the beast. I'm a monster and I eat gold and use bones for currency. Give me your money. Is he talking about your gold or your bones? Either way, you're gonna have to fight your way past this thing. I could either punch it in the head, try to reason with it, or say intimidating lines from movies. Well, I'm going to go with the movies option, really. Bane don't hurt. And I ain't got time to bleed. I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Luke, I am your father. So show me the money. They don't have movies here, so the monster has never heard this kind of unhinged bravado before. He flees, squealing from his pouch. He was wearing a pouch. Tumbles a crystal dagger. Ooh, I'll take a crystal dagger. Stephen Colbert likes crystal daggers. If you're getting Stephen Colbert a present, that's one to get. It's so fancy. Definitely the same type of dagger that you'd use at a wedding or state dinner. You pick it up. Because, come on. If you're not ready to approach the castle now, you never will be. Commit to something for once. I, Stephen Colbert, know that I can commit to this. Just like I committed to the cabinet. And that was a manly commitment that I did. You would not see a baby in that cabinet. That's absurd. A baby can't even reach the handle. So we shall approach the castle. As the castle comes into focus, you see that it's entirely constructed of frosted over human skulls. And that's super cool. And technically it's in my office, so it's mine. And I'm going to make that my office. And no one else is allowed in. 
except for janitorial staff. Because cleaning it, I mean, it's a large castle. Okay, fine. I mean, there's some mortar and rebar in there, but that's just to get it up to code. How often do you see a castle that's even partially made of skulls? It's difficult to get that permitted. Unfortunately, entry to the castle is barred by a massive wooden door. There's an ornate keyhole in the door, but the keyhole's frozen over with ice. Well, we shall try the candle, of course. It has no effect. Ever have the lock freeze on your car door and try to thaw it with a cigarette lighter? Does that work in real life? Write in, let us know. All right, we shall try the key. I feel like you're not paying attention. The keyhole is still blocked with frozen water, or as the scientists call it, Ise. We shall try something different. You chip away at the ice with the crystal dagger, successfully unblocking the keyhole. It just goes to show you that most problems can be solved using brute force and a crystal dagger. Try the key. All right, the massive door swings open into an ornate room. Deep in the great hall atop a golden throne sits a cloaked figure wearing a villainous scowl. This could only be Murloc, the evil wizard from before. He beckons for you to approach. You could always flee, because you're a talk show host, not the savior of an interdimensional cabinet kingdom. I, Stephen Colbert, may only be a talk show host, but I do not flee from my problems. This isn't the first evil wizard living in my cabinet, and it sure as hell won't be the last. Let's approach. Ah, Stephen Colbert. At long last, the prodigal son returns. I've been waiting for you. It's funny. We're not so different, you and I. You know the world needs men like us. I could stab him. Someone who makes the difficult decisions and maintains order. He's distracted. I could totally stab him. In truth, I'm a man of peace. Oh man, I should really stab that guy. You know, in some ways I envy you, but it is a wise man who... Stabbing. It's time for stabbing. Just call me Stabbing Colbert. You stab him with your dagger. He screams, Aw, dag. And now you know why they call it a dagger. Why did you do that? I was just explaining how I was going to use my magic to bring peace and prosperity to all peoples of this land. Did you just come here to kill me because the first person you met here told you to? What's wrong with you? If you stepped off a plane in a new city and someone told you to murder the mayor, would you just do it? That sounds like something an evil wizard would say. No mercy. We shall set him on fire. You throw your candle at Murloc. As the candle soars towards him, Murloc tries everything in his power to put it out. Frost lightning! But nothing works because this candle's magic, remember? The candle lands on Murloc, setting him ablaze. Murloc dies in agony, and you win a thousand points! Yes! Murder! That's the Stephen Corbert way! A portal of light appears behind Murloc, still screaming bones. Ooh, we should kick his bones. <laughs> nice. Ten thousand more points. Now let's enter the portal. The blinding light surrounds you and your eyes struggle to focus. A blurry shape emerges. Another mythical creature? No, it's a paramedic prying you free from the man-sized cabinet. You were never actually in a fantastical wonderland. He says, taking you up in his burly arms. Of course, I do have the same face as a centaur, but don't worry about it. The fairy tale adventure must have just been a hallucination from your cabinet fever. Or was it? Check my pockets. You check your pockets and feel something sharp. The crystal dagger? No, wait, it's just a pen. Yes, this all was just cabinet fever. All right, then. Well, I guess I'm just crazy. Well, I hope you enjoyed the fantastical world of man-sized cabinetry. It was both exciting and feverish. I mean, I met a centaur. And I killed a man. I mean, he's dead. He was an evil wizard, but he was still a man. But that is just the average day in the life of Stephen Colbert. So, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a good one. Oh, look at this! A body! Well, I'm not gonna leave a perfectly good body lying around out here. Oh, shit. Don't look at her. He saw. He's a witness. He must go down. Get out of here, old man. 